Hello and welcome back to Koala Moon, a podcast of original children's bedtime stories and meditations designed to make bedtime a dream. This is Peanut the Armadillo by Alicia Ainsley. Peanut was an armadillo. Have you ever seen an armadillo before? They're very impressive creatures. Like most armadillos, Peanut was small, about the size of a little dog. He had a long pointed face with a little snuffly pale nose on the end and two small pointy ears on the top of his head. He had a long shiny tail and four teeny tiny pink feet. Like all armadillos, Peanut's body was covered by an impressive shell. Armadillo shells look a bit like turtle shells, except they cover their entire head, body and tail like little suits of armor. The only thing left uncovered was Peanut's belly, which was covered instead in tufts of fur. His shell had hundreds of shiny bumps all over it, in all different shades of brown and pink. The bumps were in many different shapes and sizes, and they made Peanut look very jazzy. Peanut the armadillo was a hard worker. He and all the rest of his armadillo friends in Sleepy Forest were the designated guardians of the forest. The rock-hard shells that they wore across their back, head, legs and tail looked like a knight's armour, and this trustworthy outfit marked them perfectly as the guardian of Sleepy Forest. But despite how important the armadillos appeared at first glance, they were actually very gentle creatures. They would watch the forest dutifully from their burrows, looking out for any animals in need of help. Sometimes they would see some older animals who needed help carrying their shopping bags, or sometimes a smaller animal in need of a shortcut tunnel to help them pass under a fallen tree. There was always something to keep them busy. The only problem was that armadillos love to sleep. In fact, armadillos sleep for up to 16 hours a day. So the armadillos had to take it in turns to stay awake and keep watch over Sleepy Forest, while the rest of the group slept in their cosy underground burrows. Peanut, the armadillo, was a dedicated worker, and he took his job very seriously. However, he was absolutely exhausted. Peanut hadn't had a day off work in years, and the effects were starting to show. He yawned his way through every shift, and he had big droopy bags underneath both of his little eyes. Sometimes he was so tired that he would forget that he was on duty and take a little nap, only to wake up and find a disgruntled fellow armadillo standing over him, ready for their shift. Peanut thought he was in big need of a vacation, and all the other armadillos agreed wholeheartedly. So, one Sunday afternoon, Peanut packed his little suitcase with a few essential items for his holiday. He packed his passport, a bottle of sun lotion, his swimsuit and swimming goggles, a couple of flowery t-shirts, and a pair of bright green sunglasses. Peanut was going to take a vacation somewhere very special to him. He was going to go to his home country of Costa Rica, in Latin America. Peanut had never been to Costa Rica before. He'd been born beneath the shady trees of Sleepy Forest and had never stepped foot in his family's homeland. But he had heard lots from his parents about what a magnificent country Costa Rica was, so it made perfect sense that it should be the place he went on holiday. Peanut's fellow armadillo friends waved him off as he said goodbye and they wished him a wonderful vacation. 
Peanut headed to the airport and boarded the aeroplane to fly to Costa Rica. The flight was going to be long, and Peanut had never been on an aeroplane before. At first, he was nervous. What would it feel like to fly through the air, he wondered. His little pink feet had never left the ground before, and soon they were going to be thousands of miles up in the air. However, as the plane set off and began soaring through the sky, Peanut immediately relaxed. Whee! he shrieked as the plane whooshed and soared up into the air. Peanut gazed out of the aeroplane window and watched as sleepy forest grew tinier and tinier as they flew up higher into the sky. He couldn't believe that he was actually flying above the earth with all the other passengers, and flying was actually really fun. At that moment, a big red dragon followed by three little baby red dragons fluttered past his window, holding suitcases of their own. The family of dragons must be heading off on their vacation too. Peanut waved to the dragons, and they grinned and waved back, before flying further ahead. Dragons didn't need an aeroplane to get places. Their huge wings did the job for them. Peanut the armadillo settled into his seat and closed his eyes. He had a long journey ahead, and he wanted to make sure that he was well rested to make the most of his holiday when he arrived. When Peanut landed in Costa Rica, the first thing that he noticed was how much warmer it was compared to Sleepy Forest. As soon as the door to the plane opened, Peanut felt a wave of warm air wash over him and he instantly needed to take off his jacket. He stepped off the plane into the blazing midday sun and tilted his pointy little face to the sky. He had never seen a sky so blue and so clear before. There wasn't a single cloud in the sky. This was going to be a perfect vacation, he could tell. Peanut checked into his hotel and decided to head straight to the beach to enjoy the glorious sunny weather. He arrived at the sandy beach and found a spot to lay down his towel close to the beautiful azure sea. He rubbed sun lotion all over his scaly body, making sure that he didn't miss a single spot. He didn't want to burn, after all. Then he placed his bright green sunglasses on his face and lay down on his towel to sunbathe. He could hear the gentle rolling of the waves and the sound of shuffling footsteps on the sand. There were lots of other animals enjoying the beach today and he could make out a few voices chatting with one another and one little child asking their parent if they could buy ice cream. The comforting sounds of the beach instantly made Peanut feel so much more relaxed, and he found himself quickly drifting away into another daytime doze. Just as Peanut was about to fully drift off, he heard a voice next to him ask, Would you like a coconut, sir? Peanut opened his eyes to see a black monkey with a white face standing above him, holding a big basket full of brown fuzzy coconuts. Peanut clacked his tongue against the roof of his mouth. He was quite thirsty, actually. Some coconut water would be just right. Peanut ordered one coconut and handed over a dollar to pay. 
the white-faced monkey promptly chopped off the top of the coconut shell and placed a bright pink straw in the coconut, along with a little yellow paper parasol on a stick. He handed the decorated coconut to Peanut, and Peanut took a big slurp of the sweet coconut water. It was delicious and incredibly refreshing on such a hot day. Peanut thanked the white-faced monkey for his scrumptious drink, and the monkey went on his way to offer more coconuts to other beachgoers. Peanut drank his coconut water and looked out at the sea. It was full of life. He could spot dolphins, giddily jumping out of the water and twirling in the air before landing back underwater with a plop. He spotted a huge green sea turtle toddling its way across the beach and into the cool waters for a revitalizing swim. Plus, he could see a pair of white spotted eagle rays floating through the waters together, gliding with grace and laughing at a funny joke shared between them. The more that Peanut looked at the sea, the more he wanted to go swimming in it. He finished drinking from his coconut and put his goggles on. Armadillos are very good swimmers, and Peanut swam out into the sea with ease. He swam up to the dolphins and watched their fantastic gymnastics show up close. He dove to the bottom of the sea floor alongside the sea turtle to admire the dazzling coral reef. It was so colourful down at the coral reef. Peanut had never seen such a spectacular place. He would have never imagined that there was such beauty hidden at the bottom of the sea. He had such a delightful swim through the refreshing waters. Peanut already felt ten times better being on vacation. He had no work to think about, and he could do whatever he wanted and rest as much as possible. It was utter bliss. After his swim, Peanut returned to the shore to grab his things. He was feeling slightly peckish, so he thought it would be a good idea to go and get some food. He spotted a lovely-looking restaurant by the beach. He read the menu outside, and there were all sorts of unique dishes that he had never heard of before. He couldn't wait to try them. He went and sat himself down at one of the tables on the veranda and tried to catch sight of a waiter. However, when he looked around, he realised that he was the only person there and there didn't appear to be any staff around either. Is the restaurant closed in the middle of the day? Peanut thought. How peculiar! He wandered over to the door and took a look at the little sign hanging from a string. It read, We are closed for a siesta. Come back later. Peanut scratched his head with confusion. What was a siesta? He waddled back towards the beach and spotted the white-faced monkey again. Hello! He greeted the monkey, carrying the coconuts. Do you mind if I ask you a question? What is a siesta? The white-faced monkey informed Peanut that in Costa Rica, a lot of people take a siesta in the afternoon. A siesta is a time in the day when people take a break to rest and nap before recommencing their work for the rest of the afternoon and evening. Peanut liked the sound of a siesta. 
As an animal who loved to sleep, he appreciated the dedicated time to rest in the middle of a busy work day. Perhaps when he returned home to Sleepy Forest, he could suggest that all of the armadillos took an afternoon siesta too. He was sure that it would make everybody a lot happier and much more productive. Respecting the restaurant's siesta time, Peanut headed back to his hotel to enjoy a siesta of his own. He laid down on his hotel room's king-size comfy bed and closed his eyes. The sweet, fresh breeze from the air conditioning unit tickled his skin and cooled him down after a few hours in the sun and he peacefully drifted off for his own afternoon siesta. Peanut woke up a couple of hours later and checked his watch. It was almost five o'clock, and his tummy was starting to rumble and grumble. He hoped that the restaurants would all be open now. He dressed for dinner in his favourite yellow flowery T-shirt, and headed back to the restaurant next to the beach. It was certainly open now, as he witnessed the bright glowing lights of table candles and light bulbs hanging from the ceiling. There was live music playing, and he could see that there were already lots of customers enjoying their meal. Peanut asked for a table for one, and was seated by the friendly waitress at a table looking out over the sea. The waitress was a radiant toucan with silky black feathers and a creamy white face. Her black eyes sparkled, illuminated by her orange eyeshadow. But the most impressive thing about her was her splendid, eye-catching, bright orange beak. Peanut had never seen a bird so impressive before. He inspected the menu, and his mouth began to water as he browsed. There were all sorts of dishes that looked absolutely delicious, and Peanut couldn't choose. He asked the kind waitress what she would recommend, and she suggested he try the sopa negra which was a traditional black bean soup. Peanut trusted her recommendation and ordered the sopa negra along with a glass of coconut water. He had become quite partial to it since his arrival. Peanut bopped along in his seat to the live music while he waited for his food. The band were excellent and the music they played was so lively and funky that it was impossible not to jig along. Peanut's bowl of sopa negra arrived, and he dug straight in. He was absolutely famished. The warming black bean soup was full of tasty vegetables and served with a bowl of crackling tortilla chips. He dunked the tortillas into the delectable soup and ate it so fast that the waitress could hardly believe it. She'd never seen somebody eat so quickly before. But then, Peanut had never been so hungry before. And the sopa negra was absolutely delicious. While Peanut waited for his dessert, a pair of tall, stately jaguars rose from their seats. Peanut quickly realised that the jaguars were professional dancers as they took to the dance floor in the middle of the restaurant and moved to the music. They twisted and shook their hips and performed the fanciest footwork Peanut had ever seen. The pair of jaguars twisted under each other's arms and twirled around without stopping. 
Their dancing was absolutely mesmerizing, and they moved in perfect time with the lively percussion from the band. As the song ended, the dancers took their bow, and the whole restaurant erupted with applause. Nobody clapped harder than Peanut the Armadillo. He was blown away by their impressive dance skills. Peanut was having such a good time on his vacation. He had already taken more naps than he had in months and swam in the sea, meeting impressive new animals along the way. He was enjoying the traditional foods of Costa Rica and was experiencing their music and entertainment with delight. Peanut wondered if he would ever want to return home to Sleepy Forest. He was having such a good time. Peanut's dessert arrived. He had ordered a mouth-watering dessert made with milk, rice and cinnamon called Arroz con Leche. It looked absolutely delightful. Before the toucan waitress left, Peanut asked her, Excuse me, what kind of dancing were those jaguars just performing? I've never seen anything so intricate and enchanting before. The waitress explained that the jaguars had been dancing the salsa. Salsa dancing was a very popular dance form in Costa Rica and across other countries of Latin America. Peanut was captivated. Peanut was eager to gobble up his dessert, but right at that moment, the professional dancing jaguar started to encourage diners in the restaurant to join them for a salsa dancing lesson. Peanut's ears pricked at the suggestion and his eyes lit up. He would love to learn how to salsa dance, just like the brilliant performers he had just watched. He ate up his Ados con leche dessert in record-breaking time and hopped up onto the dance floor. He walked up to the female jaguar and asked, Is it all right if I join in? I would love to learn to dance like you. She replied that of course he could join in. In fact, he could be her dance partner. Peanut was excited to have such a professional dance partner. All the diners in the restaurant chose their partners and the two jaguars began to lead them all in a salsa dance class. The music kicked in with a jaunty beat, and the room came alive with dancing and merriment. The jaguars taught them all how to hold each other correctly and step their feet forward and back past each other and twist and twirl under each other's arms. Peanut looked round and everyone else seemed to be getting the hang of it, but he kept stumbling over his little feet and his hands weren't long enough for the jaguar to spin underneath them. Peanut tried as hard as he could to shake his hips like everyone else, but his heavy armoured shell got in the way and he looked as stiff as a board. The sweet dancing jaguar could see Peanut struggling and reassured him that it would get easier. But the more that Peanut looked around and saw everyone else perfecting their moves, laughing and having fun, Peanut felt left behind. He just wasn't a natural salsa dancer. Suddenly, the jaguar that Peanut was dancing with clapped her hands in the air and announced to the crowd on the dance floor that they would now 
all have an opportunity to perform a shine. A shine was a small dance break in which they all would have the opportunity to improvise and create their own moves in a bid to enjoy a shining moment. Peanut felt stumped. He wasn't a very good dancer, and he would surely make a fool of himself without the jaguar to lead him in some dance moves. Peanut looked around and saw that the other diners were all happily breaking free of their partners to dance and shine. They were all twirling on the spot, twisting their hips and stomping their feet. Everyone seemed to have such better rhythm than him. Peanut started to feel a bit self-conscious that he wasn't confident enough to break free on his own and perform a shine. But then he had an idea. Peanut may not be able to shake his hips in his tough armoured shell or stomp his tiny little feet with enough impact, but he could make the most out of what his unique body could do. Peanut curled up within his shell until he was as tight as a ball. He tucked in his head, pulled in his tail, and began to roll around the dance floor. Everybody had to move out of the way as he sped around excitedly. He spun, bounced, and wound his way underneath people's feet and through their legs. He created quite the scene, and when he finally popped back up out of his shell and faced everyone else on the dance floor, nobody else had even completed their shining moments. Peanut had completely stolen the show, and the other dancers applauded him for his creative, impressive shine. Peanut smiled and bowed humbly, and the jaguar patted him on the back of his shell. I told you it would get better, she whispered. When the salsa dancing class was over, Peanut returned to his table and paid his bill. He stretched his little arms above his head, let out a big yawn. <sighs> he yawned as the toucan waitress gave him his receipt. I think I'm ready to return home for a siesta, he added. The toucan giggled and told him that a siesta is only what you have in the afternoon. What Peanut needed to return home for was a good, old-fashioned night's sleep. Peanut blushed and thanked her for taking care of him that evening. He clearly still had plenty to learn about Costa Rica, but he couldn't wait to know more. Peanut walked back to his hotel and practically fell into his bed that night. His day had been so full of so many fun activities, and he had filled his belly with so much good, hearty food. Plus, he had enjoyed several delightful naps throughout the day. Peanut was very much enjoying his time in Costa Rica. He could get used to it here. As Peanut curled himself up into bed, he promised himself that, in the future, he would make the effort to travel to lots more new countries. 
He loved learning about all the different traditions and cultures, and there were so many out there to discover. Peanut closed his eyes and let his breathing fall to a steady pace. He wondered what delights he would encounter tomorrow. Peanut fell asleep and dreamt that he was an expert salsa dancer, performing on a stage with a live band. In the audience, the dancing jaguars bowed down to him, and the toucan waitress cheered with support, while the white-faced monkey from the beach handed out coconuts to the audience. It was a funny dream, and Peanut enjoyed every moment of it. He slept soundly that night, with sweet dreams entertaining him the whole night long, and awaited a new day of his blissful, relaxing vacation. <laughs>